Here we are at one of the country's most interesting zoos. Here we find the wolf in his natural setting. Next, a pack of camels. A North American greyhound. And here, two bucks and five cents. And here, two friendly elks. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. No zoo would be complete without a monkey cage. nature's own weatherman, the little groundhog, and his shadow. Over here, we find... Hey, sir, hey, hey, don't annoy that sign. It's dangerous. Can't you read that sign? You'd better take my advice and leave him alone. Shame, shame. You're a bad boy. The skunk cage is always a center of interest. Well, we're lucky. It's feeding time for the giraffe. Listen now, fella. This is the second time I've had to speak to you. Leave that lion alone. I'm warning you. I'm a bad boy. And here we come to a family of white rabbits. Of course, you all know how fast they multiply. <laughs> Now, over here in the birdhouse, we find the wise old owl. Who? You. Me? Yes. Ooh. An interesting bird is the South African talking parrot. Polly want a cracker? <clears throat> I said, uh, Polly want a cracker? Nah, give me a short beer. Another interesting bird is the Alcatraz jailbird. I didn't do it, I tell you. Okay, I'm afraid, see? Yeah, I'm innocent. I want to see the DA. They can't do this to me, see? They can't hang this on me. I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it, I tell you. Oh, he did so do it. I saw him with my very own eyes. So there. Over here, we find Mother Ostrich on her nest. Well, you do have something to crow about. Oh, 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 look out, look out. Well, a jackpot. For the last time, you'd better stop annoying that line if you know what's good for you. I'm a bad boy. New to the zoo is an elephant just in from Africa. 
Hello, Express Company. This is Joe Jumbo. We'll send it up right away. You know, those guys have had my trunk for a week. And here we have, uh, well, <laughs> these are some things we had left over from that last New Year's party. Pacing back and forth in their cage, we find two restless panthers. Bread and butter, 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 bread and butter. Well, here we have J. Wellington Buttonhook. Mr. Buttonhook used to thrill thousands at the circus by putting his head in a lion's mouth. In this cage, we find the Rocky Mountain Wildcat. Hey, bud, hey, hey, just a minute, bud. Tell me, just what made you wild? What made me wild? What made me wild? Well, I'll tell you. They called my name out at bank night, and I wasn't there! Well, I guess that little fella finally took my advice and went home. Freddy Cat, this is only a tiny little bird. You mean a poor little dinsy wincy itsy bitsy defenseless boy? Yes. Let me at him! Let me at him! I'll get him, baby! Gangway! I'll moilize him! Let me at him! Take it easy! Take oh, it easy! Show him. Why does he get that stuff? Don't hold me back! I'll get him! I'll show him! Come on, quit your fooling. Don't get up that ladder. Push me, Abbott! Don't come push on, me! Come on. I'm scared to go up high. I get hydrophobia. No, oh, I don't want to come on. Oh, don't come push on. me. Oh, come don't. On. You can't make me do it. You can't make me do it. <laughs> he do it. Come on, stupid. Get the bird. Oh. Give me the bird. Give me the bird. If the haze office would only let me, I'd give him the point, all right. Under control. Don't push me down in a box, Babbitt. Please don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, Babbitt. Oh, Babbitt. Babbitt. What's the matter now? I'm afraid of the dark. Well, I'll let you out then. I thought I tore a putty tap. I did. I tore a putty tap. Bye. 
Babbitt. I'm just no good. Oh, the brakes were against you. I'm a flopperoo. I can't even get the boy. Don't worry. You'll get it, all right. You mean I'll get it in the end? Yeah, and you'll get a big bang out of it, too. Well, that sure takes a load off of my mind. Ashamed? I don't know. Why do you do these things? I'm a bad pussycat. Oh, I just can't seem to get the boy. Ain't no use. Don't worry. I can't do it. This'll get you up there. Contact. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
Time to get up now. Got to get him up. <laughs> Getting late. Can't sleep all day, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> Can't sleep all day. No, no. I don't sleep all day myself. <laughs> Insomnia. <laughs> I've been dreaming and scheming a way to escape. As the warden and guards, they all bore me. Life in prison was never meant for me. Although I hate, I said I hate to leave my cell, mateys. My loving buddies, a sorry, a so very, very, very sorry, warden dear. About time a scramming from here. And now I am going to go. Yes, I am going to scram. Oh, yes, I'm going to go, I'm going to scram, I'm going to take it on the lamb. A go! Bye-bye! Bye-bye. <laughs> nice voice there. Nice voice. Great possibilities. Fine boy. Fine boy. He's gone. He's gone. He escaped. Why don't somebody do something? Do something. See, that's a good idea. Maybe I can do something. Sure. <laughs>
gonna catch me a rapping. <laughs> well, shut my mouth, rabbit tracks. Yeah, man. 
It couldn't be a pale pajama. You poor bitch, Doc. You're waiting. Let him go. Guys, don't fail me now. Wait. Mm, ah, uh, sorry, Doc. I'm gonna kiss me every <laughs> Well, call me Adam. The old well Dalva, it's the poor what gets uh, the blame, while the rich has all the gravy. Now, ain't that a blanking shame? Put out those lights! Schultz! <laughs> und wann Quota? Schulz? May I present you with this little token of our esteem? For me? Danke schön, danke schön. Oh, uh, just a little going away present. 
Well, see you around. story and listen to it well. I'll tell you of a great man who served his country well. His name was Daniel Boone and he wore a coonskin hat and his clothes were made of buckskin. Now what do you think of that? Dan was born in Pennsylvania in 1734. In colony days before the Revolutionary War, he was famous as a hunter while he was still a boy. And the hours he spent in the forest, they were his greatest joy. Did you hear that? That was Daniel Boone with his long rifle out hunting a bear. Listen. He got him. Daniel Boone shot that bear. That was when Daniel was only 15 years old. Yes, Daniel Boone was the greatest hunter and explorer this country ever had. Now, sometimes Dan hunted bears. And sometimes wildcats. And other times the timber wolf. Daniel Boone loved to explore, too, and he was one of the first pioneers to see the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Blue Grass region of Kentucky. 
Oh, Daniel knew the forest, he knew the forest well. The mountains and the rivers and where the animals dwell. He was handy with a rifle and with a hunting knife. And he loved the open spaces, the cleanest kind of life. Of course, there were other dangers in the forest in those days besides wild animals. There were Indians. And one day when Daniel was exploring a cut in the mountains where Kentucky, Virginia, and Tennessee meet, an area known as Cumberland Gap, he knew there were Indians ahead, unfriendly Indians. Quickly, Daniel turned around and silently he cut back on his own trail, but the Indians were behind him, too. Dan was surrounded. Dan fought like a wildcat, but the odds were just too great. He was captured and taken to the Indians' camp. The Indians knew Daniel's reputation, and they tied him to a tree post to prevent his escape. That night, when the Indians were asleep, Dan found a sharp piece of bark right back of where his hands were tied. Slowly and painfully, he rubbed the leather cord against the bark until at last he was free. Then, as quiet as a cat, he escaped. The Indians followed, but Daniel covered ground so fast that he left their swiftest runners behind. He covered 160 miles on foot in four days, and he met his friends, settlers from back east at Cumberland Gap. During the Revolutionary War, Dan was a major in the American Army, and his great knowledge of forestry and wood lore came in handy when he fought the British and the Indians on the British side. But he was friendly to many Indians because... Daniel was a fair man to red men and to white And he never used his rifle unless he had to fight He didn't like big cities, he kept on moving west And he helped to build our country and tame the wilderness When the Revolutionary War was over, Dan kept heading west Until he made his final home in Missouri There he would sit under a tree during the day And settlers and Indians came to him with their problems for he was a man of great justice and simple democracy. His tree became famous as Boone's Judgment Tree. Often Dan sat under it and remembered his old battles and adventures, and he would fondly dream of his hunting days <coughs> when he hunted the big bear and the savage wildcat and the wild timber wolf. And now you've heard my story, there is no more to tell. The story of Daniel Boone, who served his country well. His clothes were made of buckskin and he wore a coonskin hat. A democratic pioneer, I hope you'll remember that.
Pardon me, Doc. Fresh out of carrots. Low bridge. I live here. It's my home. That's it is. <laughs> Do I go around nailing signs over your house? Do I? There's still such a thing as private property, you know. Jimmy here at the inalienable right of the sanctity of the home? Forgive me, my friend. Uh, do you like blackberry pie? Uh, no, no. Uh, did you say blackberry pie? Yum, yummy. We'll have some! <laughs> what a dumb bunny! <laughs> of course you realize this means war. through the basket. There's nothing for to fear. It's a trick. The swords do not penetrate. No. Oh, 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 oh,
Agony, agony, agony. Does it hurt very much, sonny boy?